It's time for Thought Shifting Thursdays. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Here we are. <clears throat> Here we are. So the title today of our episode is, Are You Looking for Love in All the Right... Are You Looking for Love in the Right Places? Um, <laughs> or more accurately, the right spaces. So that's what we're talking about. So we're starting with a disclaimer that we are not dating experts because neither one of us have dated... When's the last time... 25 years ago? Oh, when, yeah, with me, right? Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, and actually, we fell in love. We were both in other relationships, had to end two marriages to be together. Um, so we, it, we really weren't, I dated one person while we were kind of on and off. Well, I dated a couple people. I dated hundreds of people. <laughs> <laughs> You're an expert. <laughs> we were on and off for a while. Um, but that was, you know, before the internet dating yes. was even big. That was, you know, 25 years ago. Right. So, um, so you know, we're not experts in dating, but we are, you know, pretty darn knowledgeable about creating uh, a lasting relationship. Um, so we're going to talk about it. We'd love to hear your, uh, your experiences about what has worked for you in finding love and what hasn't worked for you in finding love. Um, we just know so many people who are looking or are searching, and they're, you know, getting frustrated. So, um, you know, where do we start? I mean, it, to me, it all comes back to consciousness. And I know so many people, um, especially women, and I know you have, uh, women have really good uh, evidence to show <laughs> that this is hard, right? But I also know, and I am absolutely certain, that when we have the consciousness for something, does it guarantee it? Pretty close to it. It certainly <laughs> makes it easier to get what we want. So we'll share a couple stories about, you know, um, to to break down that myth that it's hard or that, you know, what I hear all the time is there aren't any good men out there. Um, and, and I know that, you know, uh, I, I hear so often how online dating has just become something really uh, ugly in many cases. Right. There are scammers out there. There are... You know, just a lot of people who are looking for flings, but they they're not honest about that, and and so people getting um, what did you call that? I heard this. I just learned this uh, this uh, this Phrase. term last uh -huh. night. Catfishing, which is you know pretending, creating a profile, pretending you're someone else for different reasons, just to entertain yourself, to scam somebody out of money, to um, you know. Uh, to promote your business, I guess, is another way. So, but what do you want to say about finding and keep, finding and keeping love? I, I don't understand. <laughs> you don't get it. I really don't understand why women say they can't find anybody. Mm -hmm. Men are everywhere. <laughs> I mean, if you're, I mean, the, the places that I found love is at work, you know, at church. There's plenty of people at church mm -hmm. that are looking for somebody. At the supermarket, you go to to pump gas. Anywhere and everywhere, yeah. there is there are men that are looking for you if you're looking for a love. Yeah. I just I, it's like money for me. It's it's the same the same principle. Uh, it's easy. Mm -hmm. I, I, and that, I just that's the, that's the consciousness. Mm -hmm. Is when you think it it's easy, it's going to be easy. If you think it's a hard. Even if you have a lot of evidence, especially if you have a lot of evidence for it being hard, then, you know, as human beings, we love to be right more, we often want to be right more than we want to get what we want, right? So if you, and so there's a, um, you know, Maria Nemeth, I got this from, she talks about basic assumptions, I'm not going to get into that, but I will just say, you know, the essence of, of it is this, mm -hmm. that when I have a belief, if I want to be right, I continue to collect evidence for being right, mm. for being right. So if I believe it's hard to find, you know, in my case, a woman, right. <laughs> and um, then I'm going to keep looking for that evidence because I believe, and the more people I talk to and say it, it's the more hard. I'm reinforcing that belief, right? Right, right, right. exactly. And, and the more reinforcement I have, the harder it is to break the belief. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, that's it. I, I mean... Um, I, I, I'll, I'll give, tell you a story. A friend of my mom's who um, had been divorced for many, many years, um, she was 93 years old, went into assisted living, 
He met somebody there. My mom visited at them 93. a few times. Yeah, at 93. <laughs> um, vis- and, and by the way, my mom was in sis- assisted living for a little while before she came to live with us. And, um, <laughs> and it was interesting because when an eligible 90-year-old <laughs> we'll come guy in. would come in, it's like all the women would be, you know, looking for this guy. Um, but anyway, they found love, and it was even that, like, you know, um, first stage of love where they'd just be, we'd be having lunch with them and they'd be kissing oh, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just so loving towards yeah, each other, right? Yeah, wow. uh, my mom passed away and, and uh, so I, I, I don't know whatever, how that ended up, right? <laughs> but I, I doubt that she's but a nine, still around. But at 93 you could find somebody. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yes. So what happened, you know, I, I'm baffled by the idea that you can only find people online. What happened to going out dancing and meeting somebody at the gym or, like I said, at church or anywhere that you you go to or yeah. a, sp- a spiritual events? Everybody's looking for it. And I so, want to bring it back to consciousness, and we're not going to do the pivoting thing today. We've done that in many other videos. Mm-hmm. You can find those. But um, I, I will say this. What I see in coaching people, when they get – above 50% of the time focus on what they want compared to what they don't want. What they want is to find their mate in this, in, yes. in this uh, scenario. Um, what they don't want, if, in other words, if I'm thinking it's hard all the time, I'm focused on what I don't want. And when I see every time people get above 50%, we have a measurement system for that, focused on what they want, um, a couple things happen. One is we see possibilities when we're focused on what we want more than what we don't want, you know, let's say it's 60%, that we can't see it even 40%, let alone 10%. And if you're walking around saying it's hard, you're probably below 10% focused on what you want. So the other thing that happens is seeing possibilities might be that. It might be, oh, I'm going to start going out dancing. If you're thinking it's hard, it might not even occur to you, right? Or it might sound hard, or you might force yourself to do it. And if you're forcing yourself to do it and be there, are you going to be very attractive? <laughs> and be open. Be open. The, the, uh, the other thing that I find with the, the women in my circle and women around is they want to find the perfect uh, guy. Yes, thank you. And there is no such thing. <laughs> there is no such what? thing. There's no such thing as a perfect woman. <laughs> so, you know, so they have a little flaw here and there. Can you live with that? You know, I um, when we were off and on, and I was at that point about most difficult time in my life is, is deciding to end my relationship with my wife, mm-hmm. to be with you. She's a wonderful person, and I left a good, healthy relationship yes. to be with you because I had to follow my heart. Yes. Naomi says, have to be ready. Self-love mm-hmm. is most important now. I'm almost ready since my standards are high, but it will be easy, perfect for me, perfect person for you, yes. You know, and so I, I was in therapy at that time, and, um, you know, when I, and, and, and also around that time I went to Codependence Anonymous, and, it was, and one of the, the things that stuck with me is that instead of looking for the right person, it was in this list of affirmations that the whole group would say together, instead of looking for the perfect person, I'm going to be the best person I can be. Mm. And by focusing on that, that's what's going to make me attractive, right? Right. Um, so, but what my therapist said to me, and this stuck with me, and it never occurred to me before, is he said, I'm sure there's many people that you could successfully partner with. Mm-hmm. And I always thought, you know, I'm looking for my soulmate, or even when I was in my previous relationship, even though it was happy and healthy, um, I was always looking to see if there's something else mm. that hasn't happened in this relationship because I found the best person for me as Naomi said mm-hmm. um, so that's one thing is you know as you said not looking for the perfect person but being the best person I can be and and again I just wanted to say you know uh, the other thing I didn't finish about focusing on what we want is number one we see possibilities that we wouldn't see otherwise. Way, otherwise, number two, we show up in the world with a completely different energy. 
So you go to the supermarket, if you're focused on what you want, instead of it's find, hard to find someone, whether you're a man or a woman, um, you're going to be smiling more. You're going to be, uh, you know, I, sometimes I offer an action step to my clients to actually practice flirting, right? It's kind of a lost art. Who was it? Um, shout or out. ask someone out. For us women, you yeah. know, we're always waiting for the men to make the first move, right? right? Be bold. Yeah, I like that guy. I've seen him plenty of times. I'm going to ask him if he wants to have dinner with me. Shout out to... Or have, have a cup of coffee or something, you know. Shout out to, to Jonathan Ashley. Um, you can look him up on Facebook or wherever. He's a dating coach. And, uh, and he, after many, many years, he was a dating coach for many years and hadn't found love. And now he's madly in love and they're traveling the world. But um, he put up a post recently. What was it? Um, See if I can remember this. It said, um, something about, oh, um, gosh, it's, it'll come to me. But I'll, I'll tell you my response to it. Um, and did wasn't really addressing the question exactly. The question will come to me in a moment. But my response was that what you just said, men love it, generalization. Men love it when a woman shows interest in us. Mm. Um, that's hot. It's not hot when a woman throws or chases, throws herself or chases a man. Mm. Men by nature is a, you know, I, I thought I was going to get a hunter. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to get a lot of pushback on this when I said it. It's a big generalization, but men are by nature heterosexual men. Maybe no, that's probably gay men too. Is is um, are we are by nature hunters, right? And if the catch is really easy. We get bored. And what I said in that post is, I don't feel like I've ever caught her. Because she is such a strong, powerful woman um, who demands what she wants, I am constantly still having to up my game to be the best husband and man that I can be. So... Um, I thank you for that. <laughs> so, so um, you know, it's like... And the question was, is playing hard to get, um, does playing hard to get attract desperate people? Mm. So again, my, my answer didn't really address that. There was a lot of answers about, you know, what is that playing hard to get? It's a game, right? No one wants to do that. So in my answer, it was, yes, playing hard to get, nobody wants games, but being hard to get is a sign of a woman who has high self-esteem mm. and has a lot going on in their life and are like, you know, I've got to find a man, right? You're not, That's you, not you attractive. Don't, you're not desperate. Right. Desperation uh, repels people. Right. Now we're talking because, uh, you know, we're talking most about women looking for men, but what about men looking for women? That's being both. <laughs> Both in this in this environment in this spiritual mm -hmm. community that we have going on here, we've seen men and women. And uh, last night I was dreaming about um, having a um, a get together. I don't know what we're gonna call it, but something where we'll call all those people that are looking for love mm -hmm. to our home for a um, a social uh, thing where people yeah. can meet. And whatever you know. Just so, get are you interested? These, Give us a like, and you'll get invited. <laughs> <laughs> some of these people to get come over and have a couple, you know, drinks and, mm -hmm. and hors d'oeuvres or whatever, and chat yeah. and, and meet the old freaking fashion way. <laughs> you know, you know, you've got to meet the, the person. You don't. You can't Ultimately. tell. You can't tell what somebody's like by texting or by yeah. sending dick pics. I mean, who the fuck cares about that? I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you know, you've you got to see the person. And, and, well, and, and online can... dating is supposed to meet, lead to that. In the beginning, online dating seemed to work really well. And we're not anti-online dating. I meant to look it up. No. I wonder what the uh, percentage of relationships that, that are know, successful. Are successful. Start as uh -huh. online dating. I think it's Years ago, I, I think it was, uh, you know, Very I saw high. 60 something percent. Mm -hmm. um, and it probably still is, especially after going through COVID, right? Mm. Um, you know what that was interesting about during COVID? Um, 
that people were finding, I kind of uh, forgot about this until this moment, is that people were finding that when they were doing online dating, because they, everybody was afraid to, to meet in person and, and you couldn't, all the restaurants were closed, right. right? So what do you do? That people are taking more time to get to know each other. Mm. They're, they're taking more time online before they go out on that first date or coffee date or whatever. And that it was that was actually more successful than going out on the date right away. Mm. Um, maybe mm. that's a tip for online dating, which neither of us have ever done, so <laughs> we're not experts. We'll throw that <laughs> disclaimer out again. Yeah, yes. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> but, but here's another thing. What I see is sometimes when we take action, it bumps our consciousness, right? So I might be coaching someone who wants to, you know, who's ready to start dating, wants to find somebody, and um, see, Naomi says, I know a few people met online and married. Both were intent on long-term relationships. Mm. Intention. Intention. You know, <laughs> oh, that reminds me of the thing, another thing i got to bring up. Um, what was I just saying, though? No, just going <laughs> back and know. forth between subjects. Um, but intention does have a lot to do with it. Oh, I, and yeah. self-love too, of course. If you don't uh, think you're worth it, most important thing. I mean, I'm always, you know, you have to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I, you have to be confident that you, you're beautiful and that you're worth it and that you have a lot of st stuff to offer uh, anyone, whether they're rich or powerful men, doesn't matter. They're still men. They're still babies. I sometimes tell my my <laughs> female clients, you know, if, if you want to learn how to be a confident, self-assured, powerful woman, just shadow my wife for one day. <laughs> and uh, believe me, this challenges me a lot <laughs> to be with a woman with this high self-esteem. Um, but it's w well worth it. But what I'm starting to say is that, you know, uh, uh, oftentimes I'll be co uh, coaching a client, and they haven't done online dating or they gave up on it for a while um, and then they'll go and sign up and then they won't get what they want from that but all of a sudden they'll meet someone you know around the corner right mm -hmm. because by taking the action you're letting your own subconscious know that I'm ready right mm -hmm. by taking the action you're letting the universe know that oh I'm ready I'm 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 so ready I'm even willing to try this online dating that <clears throat> hasn't worked before or whatever and you go and you look at a few profiles and then you know I, I, I do hear um, from some people that Bumble is helpful um, because in, on the Bumble app the woman has to make the first move, move. Mm -hmm. so men like it because they don't have to <laughs> send out hundreds and hundreds of you know and be rejected over and over Women like it because they don't have to weed through hundreds and hundreds. It's just what um, they like. Because it's not as big an app or system as some of the other ones, mm -hmm. um, what I've also heard is it's not as geographically central, you know, that you might get people from other states, mm -hmm. right? But hey, we started with a long distance relationship, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, um, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Keep talking, it'll come back to me. She's giving me the sign. Oh, it's 12.20 already. It's been on for a while. Yeah. So I think we're just about done. Was there one more thing I wanted to finish with? Be confident. Be uh, willing to take risk. Uh, obviously, you know, there's always risk of getting hurt, of uh, having your heart broken. Um, but you never know until you give that person a chance and they give you a chance. I wanted to say another way, this is the thing that I forgot. So a friend of mine, very good friend of mine, who I'd been with her through four different relationships, major relationships, and um, she was in between relationships, and I, and, and, you know, looking to get back out there, and I said, so what, what's your list? You know, cause do you have a list of qualities that are non-negotiable, right? And she read them yeah. down, and I said, what about self-esteem? She said, oh my God. You could have everything on my list and not have high self-esteem. Mm. And um, if you think it's going to be work, sometimes I ask people on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you love yourself? And what I found is if if you love yourself at a 7 and you're with somebody at, that's, that's a 3, it's not going to work. Or it's, mm. it may last, but it's not going to be 
is not going to be healthy. Mm. Not and it won't be healthy. Not only it will not be desirable for the seven, because they're ob, you know, obviously always having to deal with someone who doesn't love themselves, and that brings up all kinds of issues. But it also doesn't work for the the person who's a three, because they're constantly comparing themselves. I had a client who said, "It's too high." <coughs> My wife has told me that because she doesn't love herself, and because you've got so much going on in your life that you are a trigger trigger for my alcoholism. Mm. Mm. Right. So it's so it's a mirror. have so have that be on your list. If your self esteem isn't above a five, loving yourself, get it up there because you don't want to. Because if if you got two threes together and one of them starts growing, guess what? It ain't gonna last. Mm. And two threes together isn't gonna be fun either because neither one of you. Right. So you can have all kinds. So get your self esteem up. Number one. Number two, make sure that the, what you're looking for is someone that has a self-esteem level that is close to yours. Okay? Very nice. That's all we got to say for today. Uh, we probably have more to say, but that's all we're going to say for today. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful Valentine's Day. Love you too, Naomi. So if you got some value out of this, give us a like. Share it to anyone you think can benefit. Um, give a, a comment if you uh, want to be part of our of our uh, dating social, event. Social, social dating. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a speed dating event. That's fun. <laughs> All right, you guys, we love you. We'll see you next week. What's learning more? The current key frame rate? We're not going to do that. All right, you do Instagram, I'll do Facebook. End. End.